Hello everyone and welcome to another Logic Pro X tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at the features in Logic that deal with the track header. The track headers are these things right here. And I want to kind of explain to you really quickly what these different things do. So um, let's just go kind of across the board. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is the uh, instrument icon. Now, if you want to, you can always get in and change the instrument icon by uh, right clicking and then you can change the instrument icon. This is pretty helpful if you're doing uh, tracks that you make yourself. Um, they're kind of naturally programmed if you pick the Logic Instruments, but if you're working on things that you record on your own, that can be a quick reference to help you. And then there's the track name, which you can double click on with your mouse or slowly double click. And then name. to be whatever. That way you can help keep track of what's happening on the uh, the goal here or the actual line. You know what instrument it is. Again, very useful if you are labeling things that you're recording yourself. And then the first one is this M. Well, if you see a little drop down arrow, by the way, that means there are multiple things coming together on this track. So if you look down through this, there are 26 almost different tracks that lead into Trapdoor Drummer Des. And so this is called a summing stack. All of these things come to this line together. So if you want to adjust something independently in that line, you have to drop it down. Otherwise, you're adjusting everything about this drummer altogether. So... Um, the M then is the mute button. So here is the track as it is. And then you notice as I press the M, that track grays out and goes away. Uh, that is the mute button, M for mute. Uh, opposite of that, we have the S button. And you'll notice that that put a soft M on all of the other tracks besides this one. So that is the solo button. On a side note, you can have this, have two things that are soloed. So if you only want to listen to a couple things, you can solo a couple things. And then if you have a large amount of things that are soloed and you want to remove them, then press the S. The next one is the arm to record button. Typically, this uh, light will switch every time you switch tracks. However, if you want it to uh, glow red, then you can make sure that you select it um, to make double sure that that is the track you are going to record on. When you arm to record, you are arming this track to be the one that is the focus when you press the record button. So uh, make sure that if you want to record on multiple tracks, make sure that multiple tracks have the arm to record light on. If you don't want to record on a track, make sure that light is not on. Um, the next one is the monitoring button. It is not present on a MIDI track because you don't really monitor a MIDI track. Rather, it is present only on the audio tracks that use actual waveforms. So you can use the eye to be able to hear what you're doing while you record. So um, if you want to be able to hear yourself while you sing, this little eye button needs to be on. The other things here are the volume slider. Whatever you do with this, it translates to the volume of that track being different. And then finally, the pan knob here to determine how far left or right your sound goes. So for instance, maybe I'll put my slide guitar more this way and my ballpark organ more this way. And then I'll do some adjusting on the, uh, the volumes. <laughs> Now, 
And hopefully you're hearing that on your end of the video as well, that the sounds were actually panned into different headphones, creates a little bit bigger stereo field and things that are sounding better. Now, um, as a side note, there are things that can be present here that aren't already listed. To get to those things, you can right click, come down to track header components, and turn those things on or off. It's also available on the configure track header. Maybe you want to work on freezing a track or protecting a track. As you've gotten everything recorded and you don't want to mess it up, then you might want to freeze things to free up CPU usage or protect them so that you don't accidentally um, edit something that you didn't mean to edit. So you can do those things by setting up your track header options there. But this is the default set of track header things and now you know what they do. I hope you found that useful and now know what you're looking at when you look at the track header. Feel free to like and subscribe below.